Today I want to talk about Motorhead and about a record that changed my life. Bastards. Motorhead's 11th studio album was released in 1993 and as a matter of fact is the only album recorded by the short-lived Lemmy, Wurzel, Phil Campbell and Mickey D lineup. On their previous album, March or Die, the drums were recorded by session drummer Tommy Alridge. Drummer Mickey D had joined the band when the drums were already recorded and only participated in one song, Hellraiser. On the following album, Sacrifice, guitar player Wurzel was on the verge of leaving the group and his contribution to the record was minimal. The album was originally to be called Devils. It was supposed to have a different cover but the title was changed to Bastards when Lemmy saw a design made by artist Joe Petagno for their fan club. He loved it so much that he wanted it to be the album cover. I have a distinct memory of being in a record store, browsing CDs looking for another Judas Priest record to complete my collection, when the sleeve caught my eye. The album cover got me immediately hooked. It was raw, menacing, it commanded respect. Still today it has an appeal that I can't quite explain, it looks real, serious. The photos of the musicians on the back of the album were also something I wasn't prepared for. I was used to Queen and Bon Jovi. These people looked like bandits. On my way back home, I looked inside the booklet, which got me even more puzzled. Lemmy the Arrogant Bastard? Stiletto Heels? Wurzel? Man, what the hell is a Wurzel? When I got home, I popped the album into the CD player and I kid you not, at the beginning, I thought there was something wrong with it. I couldn't believe that someone could sing like that on a record. Track number one, On Your Feet or On Your Knees, hits you right in the face. The opening riff is fantastic, the sound essential and powerful. Lemmy's vocals revolve around only one note, making the whole thing sound like an air raid siren. But track number two, I knew I was in for a trip. The drum sound is massive and showcases the ability of drummer Mickey D, a real game changer for the sound of Motorhead. Though Filthy Animal Taylor is considered their classic drummer, it's undeniable that Mickey D took the whole operation up a notch in terms of music quality, becoming the double kick engine that would power the band for the next 20 years. Today everything is quantized and you don't get the kind of drumming on the record anymore. Track number 3, Death or Glory, is another slap in the face. Now that is an open feel. The song is fantastic and includes some great guitar solos and some really cool bass runs which unfortunately are buried in the mix. It also features some really impressive lyrics. I was at Moscow burning in my tank, I was a Shiloh marching in the ranks, I was a Sturmbannführer fighting in Berlin, I was a Russian hero dying for Stalin. Lemmy was a top-notch lyricist, very underrated. Who else could fit a word like Sturmbann Führer in a rock song? I Am The Sword is another fast number with the guitar player Wurzel leading the way with some very cool riffing before getting into an unusually melodic chorus. Producer Howard Benson did a great job, especially with the drum tracks. The band was so happy with it that they will hire the guy for the next three records. Sacrifice, Overnight Sensation and Snake Bite Love. Track number 5, Born to Raise Hell is a killer mid-tempo with a classic rock and roll riff and one epic sing-along chorus. It was later re-recorded with Ice-T and Ugly Kid Joe vocalist Whitfield Crane and released as a single, and it would even be featured in the soundtrack of the 1994 comedy film Airheads. I was editor of the school magazine! Yeah! Track number 6, Don't Let Daddy Kiss Me, is the first single of the album and probably left many fans scratching their head. A ballad? Ah, well, man, because I've, I've, got to, I've got to say this, um, that also I don't like the ballads. Lemmy had written the song years earlier, and had offered it 
to both Joan Jett and Lita Ford, but nobody wanted it, so he ended up recording it himself, providing an emotional punch that's usually not associated with the band. Nonetheless, despite his gravelly voice, Lemmy does a pretty good job in delivering the goods on this one. Little girl lies by her daddy's side And she listens to him breathe she... Track number 7, Bad Woman, is another rock and roll mid-tempo that sounds like ACDC on steroids and features another great solo by Virgo and even some piano overdubs. The album rolls on without a single weak song. Every track has something worth mentioning. Liar has killer guitar riffs. Lost in the Ozone, another slow tempo, features a pretty unusual bass solo. I'm Your Man is another mid tempo led by a typical Motorhead riff. We Bring the Shake features some really cool vocal harmonies over an unexpectedly melodic verse, before going back to a full-blown motorhead chorus. The deadly riff of the former title track Devils ends one of the best albums of the band, according to the members themselves. At the time Bastards was recorded, the band was coming from a decade on the brink of financial collapse due to poor record sales. On top, they had just got dropped from their former record company, Sony. So the album was released for the German label XYZ, which was a dance label and according to Lemmy, did a terrible job at promoting the record. So Bastards became a very obscure and overlooked album. For me personally, it's their best ever. Before Bastards, I was just a kid fascinated by rock music, who was learning his first chords on guitar. After hearing Motorhead, I knew what I wanted to do in life. Thank you very much for watching, please let me know in the comments what you think about this video, don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram.